What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp Essentials tutorial for you. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about the options you can use for creating landscape um, architecture type images or landscape images and uh, kind of where you can find some planting models and some strategies for doing this kind of thing. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So a uh, first thing I want to say is I am definitely not a landscape architect so I am not super good at designing landscapes or anything like that, but sometimes I do want to model things that have kind of a landscape feel to them. So, you know, things like this gazebo. So this model is just one that I downloaded from the 3D warehouse. This is the gazebo with bat house and swing by Christopher M. But anyway, sometimes uh, you find yourself in a position where you want to model like a backyard or something like that, or um, you know you want to model like a back deck or something like this gazebo, and uh, you want to have plantings and other things in here to kind of make this look a little bit more uh, more realistic, or you, you just want to create kind of a landscape option. So I just want to walk through some of the options that you have for creating stuff like this. So um, there's a few different things you can do with this. The first thing you can do to kind of detail out your landscape is you can just use colors. So like for example, if I was to come in here and say that this right here was going to be like some pavers and then these were going to be planting beds over here, this was going to be a little site wall, that kind of thing. If you wanted to stay really super conceptual, um, you could just come in here and you could use colors in order to kind of fill this in. So like for example, if I wanted grass to be out here, then I could color this green. Um, and you know, again, you'll, you'll notice when you work with landscapes a lot, you usually end up doing a lot with curves and that kind of thing. So what'll happen is you'll end up coming in here and you'll just kind of model out these different parts and pieces and you can just uh, turn this green um, wherever you want grass and then you can come in here and you can use kind of a lighter red color um, for your pavers just like this and you kind of want to use um, you don't want to use super bright colors um, you want to use colors that um, you know are a little softer and a little easier to look at but I can come in here and I can turn these planting beds brown just like this I can come in here and I could turn this water kind of a light blue color that kind of thing um, so that is one option for doing something like this is you can just come in here and just use colors to kind of detail this out. I mean, it stays very conceptual and stuff like that, but you may not really like the way this ends up looking. Um, we'll say this stone is going to be kind of a lighter brown color for right now. And also this little edger would be kind of the same thing. But so you could take this and you could just do this with colors. Um, but I'm not a super huge fan of the way that this looks right now. Just because you can't really tell what everything is. You could definitely add a legend in here and stuff like that. You could also come in here and you could probably do some stuff with some styles to kind of style that up a little bit. So if you really wanted to come in here and make this look kind of hand sketched, you could do that with styles just like this. You could even like pop this wall up into 3D and that kind of thing and then use a style like the brush strokes on canvas um, in order to come in here and make this look a little more hand drawn and stuff like that. So that's definitely an option if you want to do that that way. So another thing that you may end up doing with a landscape like this is you may end up creating this almost completely in plan view. So there's a couple different things you could do there. You could turn a, you could turn perspective off just like this to make everything completely flat. So now when I zoom in on this, everything's kind of straight up and down. Um, and then not only could you do that, you could come in here and there's actually a fair amount of um, 2D like plan view diagrams in here so so you can look for a co collection like this useful plants for landscape design in here um, and you can see and actually SketchUp has a collection of these you can see how you could actually come in here and you could place different trees and stuff like that into your model so you can see how you can place these into your model just like this so that when you look at your uh, model in plan view it's actually got trees and you could do the same thing with shrubs and stuff like that um, and I'm gonna take a look at this but I assume these probably come in just a little bit off the ground yeah you can see how they kinda come in off the ground um, just like this that way they don't merge um, with your uh, with your ground geometry because remember if you uh, have two 
two faces on kind of the same plane just like this. So you can see how if I put this object um, actually on the face just like this, the face is kind of merged and you can't see everything. So what you need to do is you need to make sure you keep these objects just a little bit above the ground just like this but you could come in here and you could do something like this with kind of the plan view trees in order to generate more of a plan view type thing in here and I think SketchUp has some other 2D objects 2D object collections in here as well so and one of the ways that you can find other uh, other stuff like this is you can look for collections containing this model down at the bottom so I find this tree that I like and I look down for collections containing this model and you can see there's this tree plans 2d option so you can click on these and you can bring some of these trees into your model you can also get some kind of shrubs and stuff like that so you can also come in here and you can find some things like this uh, plant symbols like this one you can download that into your model and when you bring that in that's going to bring in all of these but then you can copy and paste um, the different kinds based on what you want in your model so like for example if I bring this in there it is so it kind of brought this in and it kind of merged it with this geometry over here so I'm gonna move it off to the side but if I come in here and for example I want to use like one of these plants for example I can just copy paste that outside of the group and then just kind of move it over um, into the spot that I want so if I was to want to put a whole bunch of these like in front of these trees for example I could go ahead and bring that in here and do that this way and stuff like that so anyway you can come in here and you can populate all of this with um, two-dimensional plants if you want to to kind of get the look that you want. If you notice, I'm kind of moving things along the axis just to kind of keep the orientation on the plan, just like this. But you can come in here and you can detail the rest of this out. And then when you're done, you'll have like a landscape diagram type thing, just like this. So that's one option for coming in here and doing this is to do just kind of the two dimensional diagram type style. So, and then sometimes you're going to want to come in here and you're going to want to do this in more three dimensions. And so, you know, there's a few things you can do with that as well. Like, first of all, you want to go ahead and put this in three dimensional view, but uh, you're probably going to end up coming in here and you're going to extrude some things into 3D, kind of like this little wall that I've got like this. Um, so that kind of thing. But the other thing you can do is you can come in here and you can use textures in order to create a lot of these things too. So you don't have to just use colors. So you could come in here to like your landscaping section and like for example there's a grass texture in here. But you can see how you have to be really careful with this because the way this tiles um, it's just kind of the same thing repeating over and over again and when you zoom out you can really see the repeat of the of the material tiling just like that you know and one thing you can do in order to change that is you can change the size of the actual texture itself um, and you can only do that so far before it starts looking a little bit funky but you can see how I came into the texture edit tab and I made this texture bigger and all that does is it means that um, this doesn't tile quite as much so you can't see it when you're kind of zoomed in like this like you could before so if you remember before the texture was like a three foot um, it's saying that this image was repeating every three feet and you can see how that makes this look really um, not not natural so if you come in here and you change the size and you can get over that a little bit but you do have to worry about eventually at some point um, making this texture too big and things look funky there as well so um, but you can kind of mess around with that and trial and error it until you kind of get what you want um, and then you can come in here and you can add like a stamp brick texture in here and again you're gonna want to you're gonna want to be able to come in here and kind of adjust this to uh, look the way that you want it to look so maybe you don't like this asphalt stamped brick maybe you want to use something else like um, like this herringbone pavers texture but again you are gonna have to come in here and kind of uh, and kind of adjust the size of some of those so you're gonna need to know how to do that you know but same kind of thing there's actually a fair amount of uh, there's actually a fair amount of good textures in here for landscaping so you can also go and search online for SketchUp textures um, as well so you can download custom textures and bring those in if you want to but you can see how I can bring in kind of this uh, this wood ground cover mix type thing in here as well um, and so I can kind of use that 
you know, and you may want to come in here and, you know, add kind of a perimeter to your planting beds in order to kind of break them up a little bit if you want to. So, and you can come in and fill those in like this. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with textures. Um, but there's like built-in water textures as well for, for my little pool over here. It's like that. There's built-in stone textures that you can use for your wall you probably want to use more of a brick cladding and siding type thing you know maybe this rough stone look in here to create kind of a cap but you can come in here with the stone texture on that as well just like this so you can come in here and you can definitely do all this with textures and remember there's definitely a design piece in here um, to kind of break some of this up and that kind of thing and I'm gonna go ahead and turn perspective back on you can see how that looked a little funky because I never turned perspective back on but so I've got kind of my 3d look in here so the next thing you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to come in here you're gonna want to add some plants and you have a couple different options for plants as well um, so and generally I'm gonna break this up into two kinds of plants so like for example, you know, we had the, the, the plan view plant symbols that we had before. You can also come in here and just look for 2D plants. So in one of the cool resources that SketchUp has is if you come in here and you do a search for trees 2D and you search for collections and I had to sort it by popularity, you can see how there's a bunch of different tree options in here um, from different people. I like using the ones from SketchUp just because SketchUp really does a good job of optimizing things to work in your model. But um, they don't always have exactly what you're looking for, but SketchUp has this cool um, selection of two-dimensional trees and so you can bring these two-dimensional trees in here and uh, drop them into your model just like this and the cool thing about these trees is they're all face me components and what that means is they're two-dimensional in the sense that they're just flat um, pieces that are in here but you can see how when I rotate my camera SketchUp makes them face me just like this so they always face the camera because they're face me components and the other thing about trees like this is they're really lightweight models so they don't add a whole bunch of geometry into your model or anything like that and obviously I can't get into all the things that you could do for landscape architecture right now just because there's just so many different things you could um, draw an arc like this and then use a extension to kind of place trees along the arc instead of doing it manually the way that I'm doing it right here you could also use something like a component drop or a randomizer there's a lot of different things you could do to make these look a little more organic and a little less uniform but for right now I'm just kind of giving you the generals just like this I'm using the move tool right now and I'm just um, using it in copy mode so I'm holding the control key and then clicking just like this you can see how now I've got these trees in here and you can do the same thing you could come into the 3d warehouse and look for something like 2d shrubs so there's this shrubs 2d 2015 also from SketchUp that you can bring some of these in here just like this so you can so you can come in here and you can select pretty much any of these and drop them into your model and stuff like that So anyway, that's one way to come in and kind of detail out your plantings is using 2D face me components. And this is great for just doing general landscape type stuff. And so, and then the other way you can come in here and you can do this is you can do kind of the same thing in the sense that you can do this with 3D models instead. So you can come in here and instead of using all of these, all of these two-dimensional models just like this you can come in here with 3d models that actually have like geometry in them and stuff like that and uh, so you can create more of a photorealistic look by coming in here and doing that kind of thing so I'm just gonna erase these out of here real quick and then uh, same thing we're gonna use SketchUp's 3d trees in here there are definitely other options for that as well they may even be better options I just know what I'm gonna get with the SketchUp one so that's why I keep going back to those so, and also generally anything, anytime you see anything in here by like Daniel Tal, he's a big deal in SketchUp landscape design. So you could also come in here and use his stuff as well. Um, you're probably pretty safe using his stuff. 
So just, just kind of be aware though that when you start bringing these things in here, um, you're going to add a whole lot of extra geometry to your model. So this is a collection of 3D trees that SketchUp has in here. So they've got trees in here like these magnolia trees and stuff like that that are actually kind of modeled out. So and I'll go ahead and bring this in and this may or may not be the actual right model for this particular landscape but you can go and go ahead and do the kind of the same thing where you bring all these in here just like this but what you need to notice when you start doing this is every one of these um, leaves and every one of these faces is a face and it's lines and other things that SketchUp's going to have to create in your model. So it does create a more realistic look so it's great for like a photorealistic rendering or stuff like that but you can see how every time I move my model it's coming in here and it's darkening all these lines and you can definitely turn on like a faster style. Um, one way to do that is to come in here and turn profiles off and that'll uh, make your model run a whole lot faster but once you start doing this with actual 3D trees then uh, you're just going to slow your model down a whole bunch. So be kind of careful with this. The other thing you can do is you can take all those objects just like this and you can put them in a group and then you can put that group on a layer. So you can do something like if I come in here and I create a landscape or a, we'll call it trees. So if I create like a trees layer in here and I come in here and I um, put these put these trees on their own layer just like this then I can come in here and I can turn that layer off when I'm not using it and that means that SketchUp's not rendering all this different geometry and stuff like that um, so you can definitely do that to speed up your model and you can do the same thing with shrubs so you can come in here and you can find like a 3d shrub type option so like this shrubs 3d 2015 for example is another um, set of 3D shrubs from SketchUp that you can use. So you could come in here and you could create some kind of ground cover or a lot of different things in here. So that's another option. So you can see how you can take this uh, this ground cover and uh, this is actually a really good model for this because you can see it's actually just made up of a bunch of triangles and stuff like that. So it's really kind of the minimal amount of geometry that you can have in a model. Um, and still have it be functional so and do kind of make sure if I look below ground right here that you're putting these on top of the ground just like this otherwise you're gonna lose some of your ground cover but anyway so you can come in here and you can detail this out with like your 3d plants and that kind of thing so that's another option and then one other thing I'm not really gonna get into right now is you can use an extension like scatter or make fur in order to come in here and actually create individual blades of grass but that gets really kind of tricky and you have to be very aware of your polygon count and stuff like that otherwise your uh, your model will slow down really fast but that's definitely an option for certain views and stuff like that like a lot of the time people People do want a bunch of grass in here and I will say extensions like scatter are really good for bringing that geometry in so you can render it but also not actually putting it into your model so basically what it does is it brings it in as kind of a lightweight like proxy version um, and all that means is all that means is it brings it in in the sense that it's in your model but it doesn't actually load the geometry so that SketchUp's visual uh, engine has to like render it stuff like that so what you can do is you can send it to like a V-Ray or like a Twilight Render or something like that and you can actually render the grass without having to deal with all the extra geometry in your model so it's pretty cool it's definitely worth looking into but anyway so this was just a general overview of some of the options you have for coming in here and working with plantings in SketchUp so I know this video got a little bit long I apologize for that I just kind of wanted to go through some of the options out there um, but uh, leave a comment below let me know what you thought did you find this helpful is this something that uh, you're doing much with landscape architecture are there any tools that you like I know there's a lot of extensions I didn't really talk about um, there's a lot of material for one video anyway leave that comment below I love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys uh, if you like this video please remember to click that like button down below if you're new around here remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week if you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. That just helps me keep bringing you great SketchUp content. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.